Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm talking about variants. Okay, so the past few videos we've been talking about the method of central tendency, and now we're talking about methods of spread in a data set. So, on average, how spread out is the data from the mean? For example, if a data set contained all the same value, let's say 80, so the, the data was 5 values of 80, the mean would be 80 and the variance would be 0. Or you could have, as the example I'll keep using, a bunch of 60s and a bunch of 80s, I mean 100, the mean is 80, and you have some variance. Okay, so. Variance could also be more formally thought of as the average squared dif distance from the mean. And I know it's not easy or intuitive to think about squared dif distances. And that's why we're going to be talking about the standard deviation in the next video. But let's go ahead and get the, to variance. Because once we're at variance, standard deviation is, is quite easy. Okay, so the first step is you find the mean of the data set. So you add up all the numbers and divide by the number of numbers you added up. You subtract the mean from each data point and square the result. You sum all the square differences and then you divide by the number of data points or by the number of data points minus one for a sample variance. If n is very large, the effect of minus 1 becomes less and less impactful. So I'm going to go on a brief detour and talk about the n minus 1. So for reasons that I'm not really prepared to go into, sample variances always underestimate a little bit how variable a data set is. And the n minus 1 in the denominator makes that estimate the slightly larger because you're dividing by a smaller number. So it compensates for the sample variance otherwise being off a little bit. So that's essentially why you have the minus 1 in the denominator. We have a sample variance that's never going to be as variable as the population from which you took it from. Which becomes less and less true as n becomes larger. And the impact of minus 1 becomes smaller and smaller as n becomes larger. If n is 10, that effect is significant, if n is 10,000, it becomes less and less impactful. Okay, so let's get started with the example. Okay, so you may have seen this before in my other videos. You add all these numbers up and you get 80. So what's new is the series of calculations. Okay, so you take each value and subtract the mean and square it. So the squaring it makes it uh, all positive. When you square a negative number, you get a positive number. When you square a positive number, you get a positive number. So these all end up being positive differences. That's the purpose of the squaring. You can do a similar calculation using absolute values, but we don't do that. So I guess that's a moot point. You can, but we don't. Okay, so... So the first one, negative 10, negative 10 squared is not positive 100. And you go do, go through and do that for every data point. And then you add the squared differences. So the number of squared differences, you get some number. And then you divide by n if you calculate a population variance, which you almost certainly never will be. Unless you're talking about a small population, if you define your population to be 
Definitely, you can actually measure, like, uh, undergraduate GPA is at a specific college. You can measure that, and you can get a, a population variance for that. But if you can't, it the sum of square differences divided by n minus 1. So, variance is how we look at uh, the spread of a data set. Although the interpretation is slightly awkward because you have to deal with squared units. But you can still compare the spread of a data set compared to other spreads of data set. So it is the case that a smaller variance means a data set less variable between data sets. So you have that comparability even if the interpretability of Square deviation is not to your liking. Um, so, uh, variance also has the oh, my goodness, not again. The property of being sensitive to outliers is yeah, squared unit. So, a difference of uh, five yields twenty-five. Where at the difference of 10 yields 100. That's four times greater if you're being initially twice as large. Now, it can be somewhat sensitive to outliers, although that's almost never a reason not to use it, even though you're probably going to be talking about standard deviation rather than variance, because standard deviation has the property of being in more interpretable, interpretable units. Okay, that's the end of the video. Thank you for watching.